So what, what is the first thing that publishers should be prepared to give up? Or that? Give up the charge. Oh, okay. The question is, what is the first thing that publishers should be prepared to give up charging for? All right. Let's, let's yeah. start with, okay, Marjorie, go for it. Um, I, I have a little bit of a contrarian point of view because I sort of started this way. I think publishers already gave it up. And, um, and now they're trying to think about how do I take it back. Um, and, you know, I think in Scholastic we have over 40,000 pages of free content on Scholastic.com. It, it, it might be 50,000. We have a lot of games and activities. We have all kinds of fantastic things on there. And, um, um, and, I, and one of the things that we're thinking about is how do, how do, how do we keep a, a good place for people to come and it's free and it's useful? Um, but also, how much do we really need to have there, and how much of that can really be um, reorganized, repackaged in another way, so that we can monetize it? And I, you know, and I think I think just I just think everybody's going to be thinking this way, especially in the current economy where there's just there's just more pressure to make those hard edge decisions now. Um, as we, you know, there are things that we are going to be doing that um, new things we're adding for people that are quote unquote free, but there'll be things that fit very much into what people already expect to be free, not necessarily content. As for some of our different constituencies that are going to have a lot of really good things in them and they'll be highly powered and there will be some free things in there. But the goal of that would obviously be to build um, stickiness among our communities of users and to and to have it come back and support our products. But I, I really think that we're gonna be looking at people cutting back and not doing more, you know, at least the traditional people. My answer is a little different, I guess, in, this, in the sense of saying that I think people, because in so many sectors of our life now, we have more uh, customization options are presented to us. So it seems to me that one of the ways that you get a teacher and a learner to buy in to what they're doing is to be able to put their own fingerprints on, on the work to some degree. So I, I would say that the thing that needs to be given up is any kind of a notion, or, or to the greatest degree possible, the, the notion of a product that is that is fully standardized. And come to try and put together products or sub-components of products where they can be customized. So that, for example, when you go to buy a new automobile, good Lord, I hope you do this afternoon, especially an American one, but if, if you do that, I mean, you get to pick a color, you get to pick a little bit about design, maybe some other things, but you don't get to decide, uh, you know, whether it's gonna have four wheels or three. I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of given, but there's a certain amount of customization, and it's the blend of the two that builds, I think, a good architecture to it, and also a sense of ownership and pride. And it seems to be blending those two at both the teacher level and at the individual learner level. So when we play, when we play to the cultural interests of a student and we package it around his or her cultural interests at that moment, that's going to give them pride in that. And if that teacher can say, look, I'm presenting these four or five options, I think these are the best for my kids, I've got to know. I think that's what's going to come out of it. Well, how you, I guess I call it giving up standardization or finished product kind of a mental model start talking about creating the opportunity to put it together or some customization issue. Um, as we enter this um, new phase of um, transitioning from this uh, teacher-centered classrooms to teachers, I mean student-centered classrooms, I think that we would need, um, the teachers would need um, for free professional development to go along with um, the resources that you create um, so if you're addressing the needs that we have today, we need cross-curricular um, resources and activities. We need culturally relevant resources and activities. Um, we also need professional development to um, show us how to implement this, how to execute your resources in the classroom um, so that all teachers throughout the country know what it looks like and not just hear these words, not just hear differentiated instruction and, and hear these key terms, but actually you have it there for us, you've researched, you've created these great products and, and resources, now provide ongoing, but in, you know, um, professional development for free 
so that the teachers can execute it and keep it going and keep the relationship going for years to come. Any reaction to that? I think there, there should be, some of it should be free, I agree. I think it's self-serving to make some of it free because you want it to be used, you want it to become um, indispensable. And the only way you can become indispensable is for people to make a part of it. Other questions? Well, I'm, I'm going to throw one out on that professional development part because the, the part of me that has been the teacher who at four o'clock was required to go to a professional development session that I may or may not felt like I wanted to attend, there's that piece of me saying, you know, am I going to really welcome this? Am I going to walk away from this? So I think that's a really tough thing for that whole professional development area. The part of me that sat on the, the vice president of a publishing company where it's expected to be free and looking at the budget, then I'm looking at that, that number for that consultant that actually has to be paid and go there and fulfill that. So that part of me is saying, but wait a minute, it's not free. There, there is a price attached to it because somebody has to be paid to go and, and fulfill that. So it's, it's sort of like I'm struggling with how do we as publishers um, deliver that because we're gonna, we're gonna build it in there somewhere. Somehow it has to be paid for. And how do you get to that balance of providing the